What is going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're gonna to be working on project YZE, YZ250 electric dirt bike conversion. I just got these two big boxes delivered by FedEx and I'm assuming that these are the two batteries that I ordered from Amorge, one for the YZ and the other ones for the TTR project. Let's go open up the bigger box and see if we can get this bike running today. That is well protected. Connector for the controller side. I like that it says my name on it. Patrick Caslag, 72 volt, 40 amp hour. Stacked with foam, which is probably good because FedEx kind of sucks with this type of stuff. That is nice. That is so much nicer than the BTR pack that I use for my razor. Sealed on both sides. Here's the port for the charger and for the discharge, which connects to the connector that's provided for the controller. Ah, so it doesn't come with a charger. So this is the battery that we're gonna be using for the YZ. Let's go see what came with the smaller box. Seventy-two volt, twenty amp hour. Much smaller than this one. Another connector for the controller. Okay, so neither of these batteries came with a charger, which is to be expected because I think I paid like sixteen hundred for both of these shipped. Not a big deal because I have a seventy-two volt, five amp charger for my VTR pack, so I can still use that for these. Let me know if you guys have a charger you wanna recommend. I was hoping to get like a 12 amp charger or something a little bit faster. Man, that is tiny. According to Alan, this 40 amp hour battery is rated for 350 amp peak discharge and then 240 continuous, which is plenty for what we're using the YZ for. And then the 20 amp hour battery is rated for 120 peak and continuous 60 amps which isn't a lot, but I was only planning on using a QS120 kit for the TTR originally and changed my order to a QS138. So we may upgrade the battery for this thing at a later time and stick this one on the black 52 volt MX650 to get more speed out of that thing. And as far as dimensions, the 40 amp hour battery is 9.75 by 8.75 by six and a quarter. And then the 20 amp hour battery is eight and a half by six by five and a half. So this is actually an ideal size for a razor. And then the 40 amp hour comes with six gauge wiring. Same thing for the connector for the controller. Those are QS8 connectors. And then the charge port is a XT60. Same type of connectors for the smaller battery, but it is eight gauge wiring for the discharge. Let's see if these things are charged. This one is showing 71.1 volts. And then the smaller battery is showing 71.6 volts. So it's not fully, fully charged. I think these things settle at around 82, 83 fully charged. Both of these batteries were custom made for the specs that I ordered. You'll notice they both have a production date of May 14, 2023 per my order. And then the bigger battery has this extra sticker instructing you to download a Android or iOS app. That's because it actually has a AMP BMS that you can download an app and connect to it if you want to monitor it for a diagnostic reasons. Now let's work on getting this battery mounted on top of the motor. This battery seems like it belongs there. Almost seems too perfect as far as width, overall height, and length. So now I'm gonna work on building a battery tray out of this angle aluminum, which will bolt onto the frame and the top motor mount.
So I just used some JB Weld steel stick to temporarily secure all four corners to each other while they're positioned nice and snug against the battery. Then we're gonna let this cure for a little while, then pull the battery out and then drill all four corners and then properly secure it in place with some 3 16 rivets. And here's how the top portion of the tray turned out. It's very solid, very secure. And then this is how I was thinking about mounting it, just hovering right above the motor. I gotta make some tabs for the frame and the top motor mount. And then we're gonna attach it to the bottom side of this. And I'm gonna cut out a section of the foam just to put on the bottom side of the tray to absorb any sort of vibrations on the trails, help protect the battery. Before we continue, I just wanna say shout out to my buddy David Schiffy for letting me use his Hercules drill bit set. He knows I don't have a proper drill and I'm actually just using my impact driver. These cool drill bits have the proper attachment that's compatible at the bottom. Thank you for letting me use this because I wouldn't not have been able to complete this project without you. And here's how the battery tray looks up close. Very sturdy, what it looks like at the bottom. Considering I'm not a fabricator, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So it was definitely a much tighter fit than anticipated with the battery tray installed. It was physically impossible to slide the battery in there without notching the bottom side of this mount on the inside of the frame and also cutting off a section of the right side of the battery tray. But this battery is not going anywhere. There, there's no movement whatsoever. 
but I'm gonna add a strap to this just for additional security. I probably could have gotten away with getting a half inch more clearance on the backside if I rotated the battery counterclockwise, like 90 degrees, but I didn't want to risk having the cables protruding to the side, either on the right side or the left side and get caught on anything on the trails. I really prefer it be tucked on the back side of the frame like this. All right, guys, well, we are at the home stretch with finishing the YC project. I literally just need to connect those two wires from the battery to the controller, and then this bike should technically turn on. I just can't find those six gauge terminal connectors anywhere local, so I have those on order, along with the XT60 connector, so we can get the battery charged up fully before we first take it out for its first test ride. But I'm gonna go get my 72 volt bike ready cause my buddy Justin just hit me up. He got like a 60 mile an hour insane scooter. So I'm gonna go ride with him later on today. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. If you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, you wanna keep up with the YZE project or any of my other bikes, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you.